This is the iX Systems TrueNAS Mini X Plus. With its 8-core CPU, 32GB of VCC RAM, 5 3.5-inch and 2 2.5-inch hot swap bays, 2 10-gig base TNICs, dedicated IPMI interface, and more, this NAS promises big performance in a small package. Let's take a look. For a while now, we've been wanting to get our hands on a complete NAS from iX Systems, the makers of TrueNAS. If you remember back, we built a small home NAS using FreeNAS last year, and we fell in love with it. That's right, and now, in the studio here, we've got a TrueNAS Mini X Plus, and we're gonna dig into it. This video will be an introduction to the TrueNAS Mini X Plus with following videos to come, so be sure to subscribe to get more. Let's get the base dimensions and specs out of the way first. The Mini X Plus measures in at 210 millimeters wide, by 267 millimeters deep, by 241 millimeters high. The chassis supports five SATA 3.5 inch hot swappable mechanical drives and two SATA 2.5 inch hot swap bays for SSDs. Fully kitted out, the TrueNAS Mini X Plus supports a maximum raw capacity of up to 85 terabytes of storage. Up front, the Mini X Plus has a power button, a small reset button, status indicator lights, and two USB ports, one USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0 port. There is also a simple lock up front in case you want to keep hands out of your drives. Around back, we have two more USB 2.0 ports, two 10 gig base T copper ethernet connections, one one gig ethernet remote management interface, and a single power connection. The Mini X Plus also has a 4X PCIe expansion slot intended for an SFP Plus 10G add-on card, which is optional. Our test unit was sent with five 4TB WD Red Plus NAS drives. iX Systems recommends Western Digital Red Plus drives as their disk of choice, and if you order a NAS directly from iX Systems, those are the disks you'll get. Regardless of what drives you choose for your system, they highly recommend buying drives with traditional CMR or conventional magnetic recording, and avoid ones using SMR or shingled magnetic recording. If any of this sounds confusing or scary to you, then stick with what iX Systems recommends and buy the drives they have validated to work well with their hardware. Under the covers, the Mini X Plus runs an 8-core Intel Atom C3758 CPU running at 2.2 GHz, 32 GB of DDR4 ECC memory that is user upgradable to 64 GB, and the previously mentioned 4X PCIe slot. iX Systems states that diskless power consumption is 40 watts and fully loaded with disks and an add-on card consumes 111 watts. All of that's nice, but how does it perform? Let's look at our synthetic benchmark test results using Windows file sharing. First, a word about our test setup. We connected the NAS directly to our Windows 10 Pro test PC via 10 gig Ethernet with jumbo frames enabled. We used Crystal Diskmark to test the read and write performance in four different tests. Starting with our first graph, the sequential read-write test using one megabyte blocks with a queue depth of eight. This synthetic benchmark tests reading and writing one megabyte blocks in sequence. Queue depth is how many requests the drive has at one time. So the more queues, the more work can be written to the drive at a given time. This test has a queue depth of eight, which is a safe average for a desktop client. Right off the top, you can see this little NAS can really move data. All of the tests from around one gigabyte file size and below fully saturated the 10 gig network interface. When we get beyond one gigabyte, we start to see a drop in the write speed, which is likely due to the exhaustion of the disk cache on the NAS. Even with the exhaustion of the NAS disk cache, we see very impressive write speeds all the way up to 64 gigabyte file sizes and read rates that held above 1,000 megabytes a second all the way into the 32 gigabyte file test. Even at 64 gigabyte file sizes, the NAS still served up 950 megabytes a second. Keep in mind that typically speaking, multi-disc rate systems are very good at serving stored data quickly, so we're happy to see the impressive throughput the Mini X Plus served up, and very pleased with the write performance as well. Now on to our next sequential read-write test, this time with a queue depth of one. A single queue depth means that only one disk operation happens at a time, and that slows transfers down as each queue must complete before the next queue can execute. We would consider this, from a synthetic benchmark perspective, a worst case scenario for sequential read writes. Here we see even in this test scenario, the NAS moves a lot of data. Interestingly, we see better performance on the write testing, likely due to caching on the NAS. Read results were very consistent throughout all test file sizes, giving us a good understanding of how quickly the NAS is able to pull one megabyte chunks off the disk, one at a time. Sequential file access is nice, but it's only a portion of the performance characteristics of file access. So let's take a look at the first of our two random read-write tests. Starting with our random four kilobyte block test with a queue depth of 32. 
In this scenario, instead of the client reading or writing one sequential block after another, the test reads different blocks randomly. We expect tests like this to really stress test a NAS like the Mini X Plus. It's important to note that our Mini X Plus is only outfitted with mechanical drives, and mechanical drive performance suffers greatly at random reads and writes due to seek time. If this NAS was fitted with SSDs, we would expect to see better random performance results. And as expected, the random 4K test really pushed the mechanical disk capabilities. It's interesting to see that up to about 1GB file sizes, the performance was essentially the same with a larger file above 1GB showing consistent read performance until the really large file sizes of 32 and 64GB. Let's move on to our even more extreme random test. Now the results of our random 4KB test with the Q depth of 1 which is truly a worst case scenario for random access. These numbers are low, but don't be concerned too much by them. If you had applications that read and wrote in this fashion, you would not use a NAS filled with mechanical drives. To give you some perspective, we ran this test against the local NVMe disk in the Windows 10 host, and the best throughput on a 64GB file test was 51.7MB a second read and 186MB a second write. That's saying something. Synthetic benchmarks aren't real life though, and while we appreciate knowing the theoretical maximums, it doesn't really tell us what to expect with daily use. So we devised a simple file copy job between our test machine and the NAS in both directions using good old fashioned copy and paste. Here's the results of our simple real world tests. First test was to see how long it took to move multiple directories filled with different sized files within them to gauge what sort of average performance one could expect moving around files and folders. In the multiple files and folders test, uploading to the NAS averaged 333.14 megabytes a second, and downloading from the NAS came in at 313.55 megabytes a second. Not bad. In the single file real world test, uploading from the PC to the NAS moved at 355.72 megabytes a second, and downloading the single large file from the NAS to the PC came in at 323.95 megabytes a second. Again, not bad at all. At first glance, you might think that a small NAS like the True NAS Mini X Plus wouldn't be able to pack much of a performance punch due to its diminutive size, but looks are deceiving. The synthetic test results were impressive. And of course, the real world tests show us that this little NAS came here to work and work it does. For our first dive into iX Systems' own hardware, we were very impressed. Keep in mind, this is our first look at this NAS and there'll be more videos to come digging further into its features and performance. Thanks for watching this video. We'd love to know what you think, so get down those comments and tell us. Tell us what more you'd like to see us test with this NAS. We'd love to know. If this is your first time you've seen us, subscribe, like right now, get down there. If you like what we do here and want to be all social, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And lastly, get on our Discord. It's a great growing community of people who love tech and we'd be happy to have you. Thanks for watching and we will see you again soon.